Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Village of Tinley Park Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Steve Sepesi. I guess I'm going to be conducting the meeting. So at this time, I would like us to call the call the regularly scheduled. I just did that. Call it to order. Uh, shall we start with the attendance? <clears throat> yes. Uh, board member Bettenhausen. Present remotely. Board member Paschek. Present. Board member Vargas. Present. Board member Truxel. Present. Board member Marak. Present. Chair Sepesi. Present. Okay. That having been done, for those that are here and anybody else that's like remotely and that includes you, Tom, let's mute our phones. I just forgot to, so I'm going to remind everybody and myself to turn them down. And then this is the voting. This is, yeah, we did that. For those wishing to follow us on the PowerPoint presentation, you are encouraged to access the meeting through the Tinley Park Television YouTube channel. And we said if you just Google Tinley Park YouTube, you will be led to the link that will turn you on to it and get you all set. I'm looking for that. I don't, yeah, I don't see it here, but you know what? Why don't we start? Why don't we start with the pledge of allegiance because I don't see it here. So everybody stand, please, and join us. I'm sorry, you do what? I said we might have taken that out when we were. Oh, when we were remote, yeah. True story. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we all remember that. It's been so long since we did that anyway. <laughs> Where were you with that? All right. Do we have any of those disclaimers and stuff that we have to do tonight? No, I'll finish it. Lori is our uh, new associate planner, but I will, uh, otherwise I don't think you have to do any of the room. Okay, so we're gonna, let's see. Introduction remote meeting, so we don't need to do that. We did the pledge. Let's go to the next thing. This is gonna be a little rough tonight. A, I can't see, and B, it's been a long time. Okay. Steph, are there any communications that we should deal with here before we begin? No. Okay, how about the minutes of the last meeting? Shall we do that? With the approval of the minutes, I should say. Everybody got a copy of those and got to read them online, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to ask for an a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting, if anyone so moves. So moved. I second the motion. Okay. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Same aye. sign. Okay. <coughs> all right. This evening's meeting regards a public hearing about the property address at 17501 Humber Lane. Uh, Sarah Geiger, is that correct? correct? Geiger uh, is, our, is, our per, is our petitioner, and it's about a fence variation. This evening we have a public hearing requested by the petitioner Sarah Geiger for a variation from section three of the zoning code fence regulation at the property located at 17501 Humber Lane in the R3 PD single family residential Radcliffe Place PUD zoning district. It's a mouthful. The variation would permit the petitioner to install a five foot high open fence to encroach 25 feet into the required secondary front yard and located on the north property line. Before we proceed, I'd like to note that we have confirmation of the public hearing notice for tonight's public hearing being held. It was published in the newspapers and that. So can we get a motion to open the hearing? Motion. I second the motion. Okay, all those in favor of going ahead and opening the hearing, please signify the side by saying aye. Aye. Okay, now anyone aye. wishing, I'm sorry, anyone, Tom, Tom, yeah, you gotta wait for Tom. Yeah, we gotta wait for Tommy. Uh, anyone's gonna wish to speak during this matter, uh, other than staff and us, will we'll need to be sworn in before they 
speak during the presentation. So, Ms. Geiger, were you going to speak to us tonight? Sure. I'll answer any questions. You okay. Then how about we ask you to stand, please? Okay. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give to this commission will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you? Thank you. Okay. All right. So are we up to you, Dan? Or Lauren? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So here we go. So this case that we're hearing tonight is uh, for a corner fence variation located at 17501 Humber Lane. And the petitioner is Sarah Geiger, who is here present. And the consideration is to consider that the village board grants Sarah Geiger a variation from section 3J of the zoning code fence regulations at the property at 17501 Humber Lane in the R3 PD Radcliffe Place, PUD, Single Family Residential Zoning District. This variation would permit the petitioner to install a five foot high open fence to encroach 25 feet into the required secondary front yard that is located on the property line. This is an image of the front of the home. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, this is a scene from Humber looking east. Here is an aerial image uh, in red, denotes the uh, property boundaries of the subject property. And you can see to the east of that is an adjacent pond, part of the Kiwanis Park, and a nearby school. Uh, the lot itself, subject property, is a little over 13,000 square foot corner lot, 103 feet wide. It is part of the Gallagher and Henry's Radcliffe Place Unit 1 subdivision, a relatively recent plat uh, from 1995. And to the north, south, east, and west, there's uh, a series of conditions. So to the west, our property is property that is still vacant. To the south is a new single family home, a previously approved five foot aluminum open fence. Uh, to the north is a single family, oh, this is across the street. It's a single family uh, with a previously approved four foot fence that's along the 175th Street sidewalk. Uh, also to the west on the north side of 175th is an existing fence line that has uh, several fences that run also run along the sidewalk. Here's a visual showing the uh, expanse of the land to, looking to the southeast and you can see slightly to the left in the rear is where the neighbor to the south would be. And here is an image looking to the west of part of the rear of the property where the neighbor's fence can be seen in a bit more detail. Um, and it's a five foot open aluminum fence at 171507 Humber and the homeowner is desiring to uh, match the height and style of the fence and align it with the east and west runs of the fence. Uh, so to discuss zoning, uh, as mentioned previously, this is in a PUD, a Radcliffe place. It's a R3, single family residential. Uh, and you can see in, denoted by yellow is the single family properties in R3 with the nearby school to the northeast, zoned R4. Uh, here are a couple of photos showing the existing conditions. Uh, the photo on the left shows the home that's to the north with the four foot fence. And to the right is an image of this fence line that runs on the north side of 175th. And this slide, as well as the next one, is some background about how the village considers corner fence variations. Uh, the code requirement is noted up there with the requirements also for administrative approval. Uh, note with administrative approval, a fence within a secondary front yard may be permitted to encroach up to 10 feet into the required front yard setback. 
and it further stipulates it must be a maximum five feet and be open style. Um, and this is also a point to look at the consideration of the variations. Is this a hardship? Is the property, is this a physical property or truly is the lot unique? Uh, if you recall, the rear of the property, to the, directly to the east of the property, is a unique condition for this case. It does not abut a neighbor. It abuts a detention pond as part of that park. Uh, code requirements apply evenly across all corner lots. Um, personal convinces do not qualify as hardships. And to consider precedence without a hardship and without a property being unique, it erodes the code and becomes more difficult to enforce. So these are considerations that have been standard with past corner fence variations. And this slide as well also shows the visual context of lot configurations and uh, you know how their the situation could be based differently on the layout of the lot. Um, please note also that on 175th, because there's no uh, property there, there's no driveway that goes straight into 175th, so driveways are also a consideration with um, adjacent properties. Um, so the variation request is for a new five foot high open privacy fence, aluminum, proposed to be located on the property line, that's the north property line, along 175th Street. Um, this zoning district is a 25 foot front yard setback. So uh, the petitioner is proposing to go 25 feet encroaching all the way up to that property line. Uh, and this will be proposed to align with the east and west runs of that south neighbor's existing fence. So the fence that would be to the front of the yard and to the back of the yard. Uh, matching material, height and type. Uh, the petitioners noted that uh, 175th Avenue does receive um, at times heavy foot traffic for the nearby school and adjacent park and pond. Um, it is a unique site location at the edge of this, this subdivision as it's platted. Uh, it is at the far northeast corner of it. And uh, as noted before, uh, uh, there's the administrative accrual allowance. Here is an image of the existing neighborhood layout. So in the yellow, you can see yellowish orange, you can see where the proposed fence is uh, located. And in purple are these other fences, the one to the south, the existing five foot, and the one to the north, it's the four foot, and then the fence line to the west. And this is an image of showing a detail of in green, what would be permitted uh, with an administrative approval, and the orange is what is currently proposed. And that concludes staff presentation. Okay. Commissioners, anybody have a question or a comment for staff? I have a question. Uh, on the north side of the street, did those uh, two homes that are directly across and a kind of kitty corner from them also get a variance request or approval? Uh, the one on the northwest does not have a fence that goes, that's that, that one corner property. Okay, the dark I'm sorry, roof. down a little bit further down. It says existing compliant fence line. And then also directly across in the north, this is existing compliant four foot fence. Did they also get a variation approval for those being so close? Uh, those were administratively approved. It, so I think the, the longest fence line there that uh -huh. you see on the north side, that is, um, those are rear yards and they're considered through left, so those are actually permitted by the code to have a fence line there. Okay. Um, the one directly to the north from this is actually a, I think that's a four foot or less open design fence, and so that one's actually compliant with that administrative approval. So those do meet our code requirements and okay. didn't require a variance. Okay. Anybody else? Questions, comments? The Radcliffe sign, is that owned, is that your property, Ms. Geiger? Okay. And there's an easement on that, and the fence will not go around the Radcliffe sign, correct? Correct. Okay. Right, looks like the corner's notched. We're, we're going with the petitioner. There is some 
issues on that where it's Gallagher. Basically, there's no HOA out there, so we have to work with Gallagher and Henry on the sign um, issue on their property. That's the, the fence will be rolled up. I do have another question. I was out there and I noticed that the trees on the parkway are very overgrown um, onto her property where this fence would go, which I know is not the homeowner's responsibility. Um, is it possible that those trees would be trimmed, cut down, or, or moved prior to her fence going up? Because when you walk it and you put a fence there, it's very, it's gonna hinder, the, the, when people are walking, it's very tight. Yes. So is it possible that we could get I know the parkway would be the village responsibility to get those trees trimmed back. I believe that I can reach out to, we can reach out to Public Works okay. and let them know I don't know where they're at on their schedule and I don't know if this is a county jur jurisdiction or if it's no, ours. That's um, village. It's village road there. So I can, but I can reach out to Public Works so at least they can get coming on that. Okay, yeah. At least get it on their because when I walked it, it would be very tight having the fence there with the trees the way that they are. Um, it would kind of hinder someone even on a bike riding by. Yeah, we Okay, thank you. And, and so I have a question too. So the variation is, is, is it about the height of the fence or the placement right up on the, on the lot line? It is for the placement on okay. the lot line. So normally it'd have to be set back 25 feet. Right. And so this is, it ends up was a solid fence um, that we allow it administratively. You can encroach, um, it, you can basically bring the fence into that step back. If it's a maximum five foot height and open design fence, okay. you can do that um, 10, 10 feet from the, from the property line. And so they're asking to essentially go that extra 10 feet to the property line instead of that. I'm just I, the only reason I ask is because the one across the street is four feet. So, and there is a setback that ten feet. So that's that's how that one across the hundred and twenty foot does comply with our code requirement. Um, what the petitioner is asking for is that they go that extra ten feet. Okay. So what will the fence, so will the fence end up right along the sidewalk then? Or is there still two feet off the sidewalk into the property? Uh, one, uh, you, typically, the property line is a foot off the sidewalk. Because yeah. I noticed the, the longer fence on the north side of the street um, is set back, looks like 18 inches, maybe two feet. That's the question I had. So that will be the case here. We're, we're not right up against the sidewalk, right? Right. There's okay. a foot, and then typically, fence companies will go a little bit within that even to make sure they're not. When I went there. Okay. So that, that's the markings. I'm assuming saying. the markings that are in the grass are is where your fence line is going. Uh, oh, those little flags. Uh, there's a chalk line or a, 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 a some line that was yeah, drawn into the grass. That, yeah, we're yeah. There. just yeah. trying to mark the property line. Trying to find yeah. And, and the metal. Oh, that's for marking the property lines. So yeah, but that's general yeah. for the yeah. Yeah. Right, so they can okay. measure that way to make sure it matches the plat. Yeah. And all that. So, yeah. Okay, and one other question was on page page two, where we see the two backyards, uh, the existing existing fence of the neighbor, there's some utility boxes there. I'm curious if the fence is gonna be um, making the, those utility boxes inside the backyard. Uh, I was planning on Okay, so it'd still be exposed. Like you get, get to it through the sidewalk or whatever. Okay. Okay. Those are my two questions. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. Geiger, would you like to speak? Do you have anything you'd like to say on your behalf here? Uh, and please feel free to use the podium or whatever you want to do. I think uh, the main thing is it would, um, with the fence lines the way they are across, and then in my fence line, uh, create some uniformity going down that street. Uh, if mine was set back, I think it would look a, you know, a little bit different. Um, also, there are a lot of 
kids and which is not a problem mostly everybody stays on the sidewalk occasionally they cut through the backyard to go fishing and stuff like that but um, obviously if the backyard fence would prohibit that or uh, which typically there isn't you know an issue with that um, I think it's mostly just because the Radcliffe sign takes up prop almost a lot of my front yard <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so just wanted to maximize our yard space with the side yard as well so. okay yeah. very good one last thing were there any concerns or was there any feedback from public safety regarding this to be noted uh, we didn't receive anything in the, the site line at all yeah, I don't see anything in yeah. Essentially, that sign is going to get in the way before the fence. Yeah. That's, <laughs> uh, that's Gallagher and Henry for you. All right. Well, having said that, commissioners, one last time around, is there anybody with any questions or comments before we have a motion to close the hearing? Okay. Having not, is there a motion to close the hearing? Motion. Second. Second. You, know, you guys can speak up it's okay <laughs> all right it's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing do i have a can be signified by saying aye. all those in favor aye. aye okay and opposed <laughs> tommy's in there okay very good all right so what we need now is to have a motion for this is there any discussion before we actually read oh actually we should read the motion first does anyone wish to make a motion about we this Thought we did. Okay. Go ahead. So the standards for variation are shown on the screen here. Um, first is that the property cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district. Uh, the uh, staff has noted that the property could yield, yield a reasonable return if they were to construct a fence to meet the zoning code. However, the variation creates a more useful and attractive property that is similar in style and location to the neighbors. The proposed fence is consistent with adjacent fence setback along 175th and does not result in any visual sightline issues. Number two, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. The primary reason stated by the petitioner for the variation is due to the impacts of foot traffic on 175th. The Radcliffe Place PUD uniquely situated the subject property secondary front yard adjacent to the outlot, detention pond and park. The petitioner has no immediately adjacent primary front yards or driveways or visibility impacts at the intersection. The distance between the street and sidewalk parkway help buffer visual impacts of a fence. Number three, the variation if granted will not alter the essential character of the locality. The fence will match the neighbor to the south and will be similar in character to fences in the area. Along 175th is the long fence line along the north side and a large parkway that helps buffer the visual impacts of the fences. And this is standard number four. You don't have to read it. I don't have to read it, yeah. but it's the same standards as have been discussed before. And those are in the, in the staff reports and everything. Yeah, that's Just what we read before, three. yeah. The first three are kind of the statute required ones, and then those other four are kind of up there. What you guys are getting? Additional yeah. Okay. Did everybody get there? Have any questions regarding standards? No? Okay, well, I guess we could look for that motion now. Who would like to? I will make a motion to recommend the Village Board grant a 25-foot variation to the petitioner, Sarah Geiger, from Section 3J fence regulations of the zoning ordinance to permit a five-foot high open fence to be located on the north property line and encroach 25 feet into the required secondary front yard where a fence encroachment is not permitted at 17501 Humber Lane in the R3 PD single family residential Radcliffe Place P P zoning district consistent with the list of submitted plans 
and adopt findings of fact as proposed by the village staff in the June 10th, 2021 staff report. Now, does anybody feel the need to add any considerations to the motion that Bob just read? I'm thinking about those utility boxes or a, a, a reasonable accommodation being reached with the Radcliffe sign. Does anybody feel that there's a need to put any of that in? And if so, what do you want to put in? I think okay. utility boxes should not be uh, contained within the fence line, right? They should, should remain accessible to the utility companies outside the fence line. Okay. I, if you guys, you don't need to add that to the mode, it's actually in our code requirements, so you can either okay. so she's gonna, it out like okay. she does because she has a park behind her, yep. um, or if somebody does fence them in, you basically have to have a gate that isn't latched, isn't locked. That's removable. removable panel right. That's marked. And that's in the code, so yeah. that gets so checked that, by the inspector then? Yep. Okay. We'll get up with the building permit side. But. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? I second it. Okay, motion is seconded. Any discussion? I've only got one thing. Uh, Prairie View is right down the street. And people leaving Prairie View and walking home, I was a kid, I walked home from school and I cut through every yard I could. <laughs> of course. I, I hopped fences, I, you know, I, a five foot fence can be a little difficult to hop, but I think this would keep her property aesthetically better looking if everybody walked around it rather than mm -hmm. cut through it. Um, traffic on 175th Street does at times move very fast. So it, it would seem to me that there's just a little better protection. That's not gonna say it's gonna abate any noise because an open metal fence is not gonna abate the noise. But it, you know, it's just gonna keep people from being quite so distracted by that. That's all I got. Anybody else? Okay. Maybe we can uh, call the roll and get the vote. <clears throat> Board Member Bettenhausen. Commissioner Bettenhausen, yay. Okay. Uh, Board Member Paschek. Yes. Board Member Vargas. Yes. Board Member Truxel. Yes. Board Member Marak. Yes. Chair Sepesi. Yes. Okay. Now, the vote has been taken. The vote is obviously in favor of the variation, and it was a unanimous vote. So this means that when it gets to the village board, and that will be on what date, Dan? June 29th. June 29th. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. Um, it, it'll be on June 29th. It is not required that you're there. However, you may want to be there to answer questions. It will be a single reading and vote on your petition. So you will leave that night knowing if you've secured the variance or not. Uh, we can only suggest that's what we do. They actually vote and say, oh, yeah, you got it. Well, we can so. follow up with you, too, on the meeting, everything, from the date and the times. I'll follow up with you, and that would be the final. So congratulations. I'm glad you chose a metal fence. Wood's a little tough right now. Yeah. And you can you can stay for the boring remainder of the evening meeting, but you can also go if you want to. I'll go for you next Okay. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Right, let's talk about good of the order. What's anybody got? Um, I'll introduce, I guess, formally Lori, who's our new uh, planner. I'll start with the, the positives since I finally have some help. So you guys, will, a lot of the uh, correspondence you guys have already noticed is coming through her. Um, so I'm excited to have her. I don't, Lori, if you want to introduce yourself sure. or give a background. Yeah, uh, so I've been here with the village for a few weeks now and I, as Dan mentioned, I'm a new associate planner. Uh, I have kind of a unique background um, blend of architecture and urban planning, um, both private and public sector experience. So uh, my last position was also for a municipality and I'm looking forward to working here at Tinley Park. 
Yeah. You're going to like welcome. it. Welcome. You're actually going to like it. Yeah, welcome forward. Yeah. There's a, a lot going on, so I'm glad she's here because I was uh, pretty much hanging out there by myself for a while. So I'm so glad, take glad she's here, now. and we'll have a lot to do. All right, so. don't go that far. Um, <laughs> with that being said, the negative, sad side of that is uh, Paul Walrick retired. So her her last week was she's been wanting to two weeks. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and she's started here just it was supposed to be a temporary retirement position, and then everything happened, you know, 2017 and everything, so there was a lot of transition, um, and she really, uh, she's been a great mentor to me and Kimberly, brought us in, um, got us situated, and, and figure, figured everything out, and so now she's, um, I'm sure she's gardening, uh, she might still be watching us for all I know, so, uh, <laughs> she's, on so the beach. she's, she's left Tinley in a much better place, so she couldn't be here today. She's retired in gardening, but she always had a lot to offer. Yeah, she really and she's does. still going to be so she's still a planning consultant. We still have some projects she's might be buttoning up, but uh, her day to day uh, planning manager responsibilities are uh, will be over. So, um, just a big thank you to her, I think, from the village as, as a whole. So, um, and I know the mayor had a lot to say uh, when they moved her contract over to being a planning consultant. They had, a, they had a flowers and a goodbye for her, and we had a little retirement party here for her as well. So, um, besides that, we have uh, it's it's been a while since we haven't met for five months, so I don't <laughs> that there's been a lot going on out there. Um, the Tinley Park Plaza uh, bricks board development, obviously, there's a lot of progress out there on Harlem and 159. Um, with Burlington moving over there, and then still the unnamed grocer going in there. Ah, uh, it's um, okay. You can, in, you can keep calling it unnamed. And Walt, okay. Walt's uh, will be closing soon as well. Are they um, going to tear the Walt site down, or are they going to try and rehab and reuse? They, are, they don't know exactly what's going to happen at this point. I don't think their plan is to tear it down, though. Uh, if you can kind of see, they're remodeling everything to the north of the Burlington site and it's going to have a pretty modern look. I think their plan is to carry that to the south as well within the next couple of years is the next phase of this. Um, but that Walt site's kind of a big space, so it might depend on they get another anchor tenant that would be obviously a really attractive to them, and that might dictate when and how it goes. And what they do, yeah. So, but it's, it's good to see that happen with the, the vacancy that was in that center. Um, and see it moving forward. So, and just good to continue to have a grocer up there, I think, too, because Walt says uh, they've been a great partner and a great uh, grocery store in the village for years, but I, without them renewing the lease, the owner obviously didn't want to have a center without a grocery store. So, uh, And then Pete's Fresh Market's actually working across the street, so their public hearing is actually next Thursday, yeah, the 17th. Um, yeah. With regards to that, there's a for sale sign, a network realty for sale sign on the property. So they're going to have outlets. So that's actually for the outlets. It is for the outlets. Yeah. I, I so made a bet have, with somebody. I win. Yeah, the, <laughs> they're not selling it at this point. So I they're actually think so. using the old Kmart building kind of as a mini distribution site for mm -hmm. the area. And then they're going to build a new Pete's in the back uh, along with some additional retail. Yeah, they're going to so, rip out the old But then what, they Aldi's actually have up to four outlock sites along Harlem Avenue, which I, I think those are pretty attractive right now. <laughs> you see a lot of the yes. a lot of those sites popping up. So I think those will be, especially once Pete's breaks ground, I think that'll be really attractive to some developers. Um, the, the Actually, on that note, we have two Starbucks sites going in. Two that were approved, so there's one on LaGrange and 179th that was an old MD Financial uh, that'll be converted to a Starbucks and multi-tenant site, so it'll be up to three other tenants there. And then the other one is on Harlem, uh, just south of the 7-Eleven project that was approved and is vertical, uh, almost, the building's almost yeah. done. Out there, they move pretty quick, so they it's did. actually the same developer doing those two projects. So um, they're 
good to see them continue. They, that's kind of their bread and butter. They do 7-Elevens and they do these kind of drive-through outlets. Um, so they, I wouldn't be surprised. Hopefully they maybe some other ones. And for the start, either love Starbucks or you hate it, but I think we need more because the one on 159th is out to Harlem. Yeah, when, they, when they're lined up down Harlem for that drive up, it definitely impacts so traffic. Maybe that'll take some of the the demand off and no one's that. smart enough to pull in the lot and be in front of the dental office or anything just no. yeah okay People take the quickest path not necessarily the best path the way they're going um there is we had the public hearing for scanal uh the de development called tinley park business center which is Walmer and harlem across from the amazon building so they're doing some industrial warehouse there obviously amazon has kind of changed what the vision was out there. Uh, Tinley's original vision was not warehousing, um, but we kind of, Amazon kind of went in there without any public input, uh, and any notice from Matt Matson. So this kind of changed that. Um, I think we've done a pretty good development, uh, looking at truck access, light access, uh, make sure it's buffered from Harlem pretty well with a with a burn and landscaping. So Isn't Amazon kind of playing for all that Volmer Road improvement. Yeah, they're doing some of the initial improvements out there to the so that's kind of good for us. The lights uh, and even an additional light on Volmer. So this development actually kind of ties into that stuff pretty well with what they're doing. Are they putting any more lights in from Harlem on the 91st to Volmer or mm -hmm. or no? Um, on. 195th, like so, across from the gas from the gas and wash. At Benton Drive, there. Yes. Uh, well, well, Benton, Benton, already, Benton has already has a light. Benton has a light, yeah, but uh, doesn't we're go. We're trying east. to get another one on 195th, which is where that gas station is. So right. both the developer and the village are actively trying. It, it's essentially up to IDOT whether it's approved or not. Um, but everybody is invested in applying for it, getting the traffic studies done. And trying to get that done. Okay. How we big can't of a guarantee it because it's I dot but everybody wants it. And it, I know the access we heard it especially with, with the gas station mm -hmm. uh, annexing in that it's difficult to make left and I know that too because I don't go to that BMO Harris because I don't want to make left. No, <laughs> I don't go out that, that way at all. I go I go for my subdivision out the other way. Yeah, so we're fire station. Hopefully we can get another light out there that would I think I, I think it'd be yeah, yeah. real real help. Um, how big of a wall are they putting up between the development and the Odyssey Club? Uh, there won't <laughs> be a wall, so uh, it's a moat a, or something. <laughs> it, well, so there's already the existing. There's a creek that's actually out there on the adjacent property that's pretty heavily wooded, um, and then they'll be doing a pretty strong landscape berm on their property line, and then there's even the berm that's on Odyssey property line. So there's almost three landscape firms between this development and them. Um, That's good. And it's about, I think it's 1,300 feet property line to property line and 1,700 square feet between like the nearest home and the nearest building. So you that should come a lot of the fears, yeah. distance if you're out there. That's good. Um, so we did try and mitigate all that and I think it's better served in Tinley than, than elsewhere. Uh, it's going to serve the tax base, if nothing else. Yes, and that's always good, too. So, mm. um, and, and just employment in general. So, the developer's been really good to work with. Uh, I, I'll say there's a utility. Odyssey will basically have a dead-end water line now. And with this development, the developer is actually going longer with the water line, connecting it and looping it. So now if there's a water main break down the the pipeline Odyssey doesn't have their entire subdivision shut off from water. We'll have a second line in there. So um, that's big from a public safety utility planning standpoint. Um, and then also they're donating land on, on their development for a radio emergency tower. So uh, we've heard emergency communication over there is kind of iffy and, and can break down and drop occasionally. So Cell phones can too. Over there. This won't help the cell phones. It'll no. just be emergency radio dispatch. Mm. But theoretically, the cell cell phone companies could maybe lease space on it too. If that helps. So, so. 
Um, so that's it's a pretty massive develop as 1.3 million ish square feet of floor space uh, between two or three buildings and 110 acres of property. So Beautiful. it's a, a good good chunk of property out there. It, it again is what it is. Probably wasn't the vision we had, but I think it's it's the best development in the market and with Amazon there. Uh, besides that, then we have the, all the downtown projects going on, so it's good to see those kind of cut, finishing up now with, with summer. It makes it kind of a nicer area to walk around and look with some of the I new saw development. that Banging Gavel was open outside yeah, the other day. Yeah, so Banging Gavel's patio's open, um, just the patio for right now, and then we're still working on getting financing and the work completed on the inside. So um, at least for the summer, they have a patio there. there. Which is, and they're going to have musical acts. I think they're somewhat connected to SIP and Ed and Joe's uh, to serve food out there as well. So um, excited to see that. South Street obviously finishing up and starting to look good on the boulevard. Uh, but their sign up and the commercial space starting to get to the point where they can actually get tenants potentially doing work and then moving in. Uh, the apartments are finishing up with all the the finishes and the apartment so I think those will be for actually for lease and move in soon um, and then hopefully soon after this is kind of finished up they'll move on to phase two so, just the other portion of that um, and then avocado theory is doing a, a project just north of Ben and Joe's it's amazing what they've done to that old building yeah I, <laughs> yeah they should have probably just demoed it from the beginning and started from scratch but uh, they did work kind of around what they had, but I, once they opened it up with a 110-year-old building, it, it, it had taken its toll and not maintained that well. So, um, but they're they're finishing up now, and I know Prunal's at the uh, farmers market every weekend. So if, if you want to try his guacamole beforehand, you could try it there. But he's going to have a much larger menu, obviously, when he opens that up with a nice patio. He's got the overhead doors. It has really done a good project out there, so excited to go get lunch there. Um, that's it. I'll stop talking. Next meeting's June 24th, and we have two items on that agenda. Um, You're going to hate this, but I have two questions. Sure. Side yeah. Street, is it gone? Uh, actually, it, the land was purchased by the developer of the boulevard, so it's not potentially the, no. uh, well, which one did you say? Side Street. I was thinking about the oh, one on sorry. 103rd. Sorry. I was thinking of a different Side Street Tavern? Yeah, um, Side Street actually is reopening is North and Main. It's one of the old owners of Side Street. So it, I don't know if it's open right now, but I know they kind of did a soft opening. So. Yeah, I was there this morning. The sign was still covered and everything. Okay. So it should be soon. I know they have a Facebook page you can follow. I don't think their website's operating, though. So I'm kind of looking forward to it, too. That's but North and Main, you're going to call them? Yes. Okay. North and Main. One Is more. North and Main? Maybe it's North and something. <laughs> One more Albatross. It, it. I know they're inching closer, so they did a remodel in there with kind of new furnishings, new paint. You know. I actually so needed it. That's a big place. It was never a great-looking place. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they find it. Because it's kind of been the same since it was Ariel's and I was something looking for that. Yeah, Ariel's, I forgot about so that. So it, it's pretty much been the same, so I think they gave it a more modern refresh. <coughs> One last albatross. Brown's chicken. Yes. Is anything going there? Yes. Is Harold's going there? No. No? <laughs> it, it, I was, it was hoping. It was purchased um, at this point. Or it's under contract, I believe, right now. So it's, we're getting a redevelopment there. Not, we don't have any applications or anything in for it yet, but hopefully coming pretty quickly. Um, it's a good location there. So not, a, not the best building, but a good location. So. It's a great location. Uh, I'm going to leave you at that. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have anything for the good of the order or comments or questions? before we get y'all out of here. No, sir. Okay, Chair, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Second. 
All those in favor of adjourning the evening meeting, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Are you there, Tom? No, he took a nap. He's, <laughs> he's, he's gone. He's, he's not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Pretty good, yeah. yeah.